Welcome, 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 ladies and gentlemen, to the beginning of the week technical analysis. I think John, um, sorry, I think Corman is going to be joining us shortly. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. Um, let me give a quick disclaimer, as always. This is not financial advice. Anything that I share during this analysis is for educational purposes only. I repeat, this is not financial advice. Any and everything that I share during this analysis is for educational purposes only. Cool beans, cool beans. Well, 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 how's everybody doing? It's been a great weekend for me. Spent time with my daughters. We ate together, laughed together, played together, and just had a grand old time this weekend. So I hope you guys was able to enjoy family and friends as well. So with that being said, um, looking back at the weekly wrap up, which was the last analysis that I posted, keep in mind, I do not post all of my material and all of my content to YouTube. Some of that is strictly reserved for um, paid subscribers. So with that being said, if you go back and look at the last video that was posted, which was the, the weekly wrap up. Um, you will see that um, from last week, I told you guys that coming into this week, I wanted to see the dollar index um, continue to the downside this week. Um, I told you guys that I continue to see this downward trend that we've been in since February the 13th to continue down to these weekly PDRA levels that I have marked here. Right. Um, and so today we had a pull back up to the monthly 79 percent PD array level that we pushed through last Thursday. And so we pushed back up to retest that today. Um, we didn't quite retest it as I'm looking at it, but we came close, close enough. Um, and I would like to see this candle engulf this candle and continue lower and break below this monthly and weekly PD array here and close below those levels, right? And once we see that, that will be um, in line with um, me wanting to see price continue to the downside to retest these uh, weekly PD arrays that I have identified here. Cool beans, cool beans. And if we break back above the monthly PD array um, aggressively and close above it, then um, I will be paying attention to this fair value gap that we have here, right? And seeing if we can break above it or if we just pull up into the consequent encroachment of that fair value gap and continue lower. So that's what I'm paying attention to for the dollar. But as of now, I am... Um, on the side of seeing this daily candle here be a aggressive bearish candle to the downside, breaking and closing below the monthly and uh, weekly PD array that's, that's below price right now. So with that being said, I think my internet is cutting in and out because my mouse isn't moving. Um, give me a second, guys. Yeah, I think my um, mouse, I think my um, audio was cutting in and out because my mouse wasn't moving for a good little minute there. But as I was saying, I do want to see the daily candle that we're currently in for tomorrow. Um, I want to see this candle give us an aggressive push and close below the monthly and PD array levels that you see here. Who cool beans? Who cool beans? So with that being said, let's take a look at the currencies um, that my group trade, right? My group has been trading Euro, USD, GBP, USD, and NZD, USD for years. Um, and those are the only currency pairs that I go over on the uh, 
analysis when I uh, do these analyses. And so we've been in this um, Euro USD loan since we broke below this monthly sell side liquidity um, and, and got back above it, right? That's what we wanted to see. I had it draw, I had it, um, I had it drew out for you guys for a while now. Um, so off of the level that we entered off of, which is the monthly sell side liquidity, off of that level, um, price is currently at 205 pips off of that level. Um, going forward, what I would like to see is I would like to see price hold and respect this 79% monthly PD array that we just came back down and retested, right, after pushing up here, right? I want to see us hold here. I don't want to see us break below there aggressively and close below there. I would like to see us continue higher from this level that we're at now, right? And if we do break below the monthly 79% PD array level, I uh, will be looking at how price reacts to the top of this uh, shaded fair value gap that we see. Who cool beans? Who cool beans? Uh, and so I, if I did trade currencies personally, I would take a buy off of this level, right? Stop loss probably below the opening of this candle right here. And if I got, if I took a hit there, if my stop loss got hit there, then I would enter again at the top of this fair value gap. Uh, stop loss below consequent encroachment. And uh, if I got stopped out right there, then I would have to step back and reevaluate because that could mean that price is getting ready to attack sell side liquidity, right? Whether it be this swing low sell side liquidity or uh, this sell side liquidity or all the way back down to the monthly sell side liquidity. But as of now, I would like to see Euro USD continue pushing higher. And as I have it, um, as I have it drawn out here, I am um, looking for Euro USD to run the monthly buy side liquidity, right? Blue bean. Um, looking at the pound, um, as we can see with the pound, um, price has already um, ran that a uh, monthly buy side liquidity that we wanted to see run, how I have it drew out right here, right? We got that last Friday. Ah, I wasn't even aware of that. I haven't looked at pound since Thursday, I don't think so. Um, yeah, that was beautiful. That was beautiful. Well, no, I did look at it Friday because I did the weekly wrap up. So yeah, we hit that uh monthly buy side liquidity Friday. Now I do expect a little pullback, probably pull back down to the structure that we just broke up above here, right? Probably pull back down. See, notice fair value gap there, daily fair value gap, right? So as a matter of fact, we um just take that, take that, and you know, just move that like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah. Let's see if the pound comes down into this daily fair value gap and continue higher, right? If I traded a pound, I would take my buy off the lower end of that fair value gap, right? Stop loss below the opening of this candle. Right? So that would look healthy stop loss. Um, about 35 pips on your stop loss. You know, so $33 at a dollar a pip, 330 Three dollars at ten dollars a pip and about uh what three dollars and thirty three cent at ten cent a pip. So yeah, that's beautiful. That is beautiful. So that's what I'm expecting out of 
um, the pound. If we break below this daily fair value gap, then I expect price to come back down and retest the monthly PDRA here. Cool beans, cool beans. So I already got the run of the monthly buy side liquidity for the pound. And looking at NZDUSD, still got my eyes on the monthly buy side liquidity as well as in line with the pound and euro USD, right? But uh, NZD is taking its sweet time getting there, right? We're up off of our buy level. Well, technically, this was our buy level here. Um, 108 pips. So I want to see how we respect the fair value gap where price is currently at. And if we do indeed respect this fair value gap, then as I just said, I would like to see price continue making higher highs and higher lows. Um, targeting this buy side, this monthly buy side liquidity. Who beans? So this is what I'm expecting out of currencies for this trading week. Uh, last but not least, looking at futures. Um, I'm expecting us to pull back up into Friday's premium price levels from Friday's price range, right? This is Friday's price range here. This is my PD array levels, my premium um, price levels for Friday's price range, and I expect price to pull back up and retest those levels and show us whether it wants to continue higher by breaking through those levels aggressively and closing above them, or if it wants to push lower by respecting these levels and not breaking and closing above them um, and closing um, below them, showing us that it would like to continue lower to target sell side liquidity, whether that be daily, weekly, or monthly. Um, so this is a monthly buy side liquidity, but um, I need to um, set a new monthly sell side liquidity as a matter of fact for futures to to February sales allocations. Yeah, that would be right there. So yeah. Who cool beans? Who cool beans? So yeah, that's what I that's what I'm expecting out of ES, right? Pull up, retest Friday's premium price level. Um, before continuing lower or either pushing through those premium price levels and continuing higher. It's up to price, and we just got to wait on price to show us, give us the confirmation on what it is that it wants to do. Same thing with NQ. I'm looking for price to push back up and retest Friday's premium price levels from Friday's price range, right? This is Friday's price range, this candle, right? From this week, from the high to the low, that's Friday's price range, right? Just the range of Friday's price, right? From the high to the low, low to the high. And I expect us to push up and retest these premium price levels and price to do either one of three things. Push through those premium price levels aggressively and close above them giving us a confirmation that price wants to continue higher and run buy side liquidity or respect those premium price levels and close below them, showing us that price wants to um, push down some more and run sell side liquidity to the downside. Either or, we just have to, you know, let price do its thing and give us our confirmations. So, that's what I'm looking at for the beginning of the week technical analysis. Um, Corman did just join us. Yay! So um, at this time, I will pass the microphone over to her so she can give us the sauce 
on a fundamentals for this week. So that being said, it is all yours, Queen. Well, hey, everybody. So um, I'm going to keep fundamentals short just because I'm not in front of my computer at the moment. But I will say a few things that have been um, somewhat pressing. Um, and I say that because um, when we start to think about the economy and we start to think about markets, it's really important that you kind of keep your head on a light swivel you don't have to pay attention to every little thing but there are some things that really matter and some things that really help to bring more understanding and also add the missing pieces to the puzzle of what could possibly happen so um we are in a presidential election year hopefully everyone is aware of that um biden is our current president and he is running for re-election. When you have a president who is running for re-election and they are trying to get another term in office, markets um, by slight coercion or just naturally, most of the time is with coercion, tend to remain relatively stable to start the year. Um, they also tend to remain relatively stable up until the election. Um, and when I say relatively stable, the dip days, days where the markets really should technically be correcting, um, they won't. And that's kind of a product of what we're seeing now. However, I'm sorry, Thomas, there are could you repeat that? Um, you broke, you cut out when you said um, markets typically stay stable. I'm sorry. Okay, so markets typically stay stable um, up until the election. However, um, as we look at the markets right now, um, there are some signs that you can start to see where um, that stability is becoming a little bit more uncertain. So um, there are some things, I think we've talked about these things before, we've talked about them a while back, um, but just to kind of recap what they are. Um, first of all, the yield curve, if you haven't looked at it, it's still inverted. Um, some people will point to the fact that um, it doesn't matter anymore. Um, it, it definitely matters. Um, it's just a matter of how the markets are responding to it right now. Um, also, we talked about monopolies. So we talked about a lot of companies consolidating within the same market or cross market um mergers happening so um there have been several examples of this that have happened um within the last six months and currently going on now um there are some mergers they're still waiting for congress to approve them um just because of the size of the market the um there's like a, a sense of we want to make sure that pricing won't get out of control. That happens with Congress when you start doing certain mergers of companies of size. So that's one thing. Um, and then the changing of the guard. So it hasn't necessarily been a main thing yet. Um, it could be. Um, it definitely could be very soon that um, you will have index funds that will restructure their portfolios. And I know this to be the case, and I'm predicting highly that this will happen because 
you have certain companies that have reigned supreme for a really long time. Those companies are now starting to, I don't want to say they're losing favor, but when you think about the amount of popularity that they had before, they don't have it anymore. Um, there are other companies that have started to take their place and it'll be really interesting to see how the markets respond to this. Um, a lot of people tend to look to Warren Buffett for um, a sense of direction in terms of where the markets are going and in terms of what could possibly happen. If you do that, then you probably are not leaning towards a lot of the, uh, you're starting to pick FANG apart, we put it like that. The FANG stocks, you're starting to pick those apart. You're starting to try to figure out, okay, where um, are we really going with this group? Um, and so that's one thing um, in that whole realm. It's actually a lot of things, um, you know, when you really start to put it all together, um so companies that were you know a part of the either magnificent seven or fame um they're starting to fall out of favor and you have those companies now that have been at the top and most highly weighted or the most heavily weighted companies and index funds now um starting to see a slide in some of their numbers. So it's like, okay, index funds are always looking for companies that are going to give the best, the best and biggest returns. So if that's the case, then these companies that aren't doing all that great, haven't been innovating, they haven't really been putting money into new products, research and development, um, you know, they might have they might have to take a back seat. Um, I could give an example of this, but I'll wait until Wednesday. Um, but there are several examples, actually. But there's one right now that kind of sticks out in my mind in the tech sector. Um, healthcare is also another one. Um, consumer discretionary spending um, is another area where you tend to see a lot of these changes happening. So anyway, um, with all that being said, uh, those are just surface things. Um, some of the deeper things that are happening that a lot of people were putting your personal opinion read articles or um, position in a company if they start selling stock the first thing people think is oh you know they're just you know that's the rich getting richer you should tax them so on and so forth what a lot of people miss and you anticipated that the stock market was going to go up and you can replace stock market with crypto with real estate with anything that you anticipate that's going to go up in value, if you anticipate that it's going to go up in value, would you sell it or would you hold on to it and let it see its full potential? And that's the question you have to ask yourself whenever you're reading these articles and you're hearing about CEOs that are selling stock, like Jamie Dimon, for instance. Um, if you don't know Jamie Dimon, CEO, JP Morgan. So um, there was an article that came out about him um, selling stock, but then also they did like a follow up with like a lawyer and a potentially like an estate planner. But the reason was, you know, he's been holding this stock for a really long time. And now JP Morgan is, as the company, is really starting to think about like, okay, what is going to be our plan for when he leaves? Like we need to come up with some type of plan. And then also he really hadn't sold anything. So 
um, you know, I get the conversation when people talk about the rich and taxes. But if you put that aside and you think about what I just said, and you ask yourself the question, if the market is still going to continue to move up, especially in leaps and bounds the way that it has, then what would be the purpose in selling if you're missing out on gain? Um, and that brings me back to the original point that I was going to make about the markets and that these markets are severely overinflated. Um, and it looks good for the president trying to keep their seat, trying to stay in office, for markets to continue to look good. Um, because you don't want everything to fall apart right before the election. And then that gives people a negative impression. So um, in my opinion, I feel that with everything that I just said, in addition to fundamental and technical, if you're a technical only trader indicators in the market, it shows that the market is um, being artificially inflated or kept high um and you know a lot of things have already been priced into the market so for instance when you think about rate cuts a lot of the rate cuts that are anticipated for this year were priced in last year um because as soon as the announcement was made markets jumped um you know you had days where the market was up like whole percentage points and then weeks where the market was up you know anywhere from two to five percent so um as we start to think about those things it's really important to understand that um now is the time not to jump in the market you know uh feet first all in on the deep end however you want to say it, phrase it, um, now is not that time. Now is the time to kind of take stock, inventory of what trades you have out there, um, what you want to do with your trades, because you don't want the day to come where the markets are like, okay, I'm tired for you to decide, okay, I need to figure out what to do with my stock, my bonds, my options, whatever it is that you trade and hold. Don't wait. Like you should already have, you should have had a plan before you traded it. But if you don't, now is that time to do it so that you know what to do. And then also have a plan for, you know, okay, if markets do slide, how do I want to get back into the market? Um, or do you want to get back into the markets? Do you want to wait a little while? Um, you want to make sure that you know because you don't want to FOMO into the markets if you see the market starting to rally again off of, off of a particular level. Um, and then you kick yourself, like, don't do that. Um, just make sure you're aware of what the markets are doing um, so that you can make the most informed decision. So um, we do have a few economic indicators. Um, tomorrow we have CPI um, coming out. So that news is going to go into helping to form next week's news. So um, we do know that the Fed uses CPI and core PCE as measures of how the economy is doing, what they plan to do with rates. And rate news is coming out next week for the U.S. So we do know that the news that's coming out tomorrow is going to be very important to help form that decision. Um, typically, though, a lot of those decisions 
some people will say that they have already been made, but if you have people that are on the fence, um, and if you were actually waiting for that news item to come out, it's possible that um, you're waiting. Um, you're waiting. You're going to have those last minute Fed meetings um, with the committee, and then um, a decision will be made. So, um, that news item is definitely going to be important, especially for this week. And then also looking at what areas of the markets or what areas of the economy, excuse me, um, are still experiencing high levels of inflation um, and what areas has it come down. And then um, kind of leading into next week, thinking about, okay, is the Fed going to really lower rates now or are they going to wait? And if they wait, what are they waiting for? So um, those are the biggest things right now that I have seen in the market um, that I'm paying attention to. Um, of course, um, I'll also talk about the State of the Union address, um, but I'll do that on Wednesday when I talk about the companies um, that I mentioned earlier. Um, they don't actually go together. They're not necessarily related, but I'll talk about both of those. Then um, I think regardless of what party you support, listening to the State of the Union address um, was something that was, um, it should have been done by everyone. I know it wasn't, but it gives you insight into what to expect for the next four years should Biden be reelected. And then it also gives you insight into how independents and Republicans feel about certain issues. So um, we were going to talk about it on Friday, but I wasn't on the call. So we'll do it Wednesday because I have a list of points that I um, made note of. And then that will carry into also just talking about the Fed meeting and then kind of talking about what to anticipate going into April with all the financial news and then the summer, um, seeing how that's going to all shake out. So anyway, that's the fundamental wrap up or that's the fundamental news. <laughs> Sorry, not wrap up, but that's the fundamental news for Monday. Um, and Wednesday, like I said, we have several things to talk about. But I'll go ahead and turn it back over to Mr. Lovers. Cool beans, cool beans, cool beans. Um, how um I seen that we got a red folder for tomorrow. The ten year bond option is should we be worried about that? Should we expect a lot of volatility from that news item? The biggest news item that's coming out tomorrow is going to be the CPI. Okay, cool. Man. Is the 10 year bond always um, red? I thought that photo was usually like orange or yellow. Well, I could be true. I mean, it just depends on what time of the year it is. And, um, I mean, the yield curve's inverted, so I mean, yeah, it's important right now. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, because I see we got the 10 year tomorrow and the 30 year bond option Wednesday, and it's red as well. So that's what drew my attention to it. That's why I asked. Okay. Cool beans. Cool beans, cool beans. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that will conclude the beginning of the week technical and fundamental analysis. As always, if these analyses add any value to your life whatsoever, feel free to like, share, and most of all, subscribe to the YouTube channel. It really helps out a lot, guys. And if you're interested in joining the private Telegram group where you get these calls every time because you are a part of the community, because as I said at the beginning of the call, I do not post all of the content to YouTube. Most of the content is reserved for paid subscribers. So if you're interested in um, joining the private Telegram group, visit precisionpipsllc.com 
and sign up for the Super Pack. Cool beans, cool beans. Well, as always, I appreciate you guys coming out tonight, tuning in, getting this knowledge and empowering yourselves. Let your family and friends know you love them while they're still here, please. And as always, peace and love, everybody. You know.